The KSO Show is back to talk about the Kansas State running backs as we've already sifted through, you know, a group of positions. We've discussed, I think, the linebackers, safeties, and the quarterback position and the offensive line. Mm -hmm. So this will be the third um, position group on the offense. The running back position, obviously, we all know Deuce Vaughn is the star of the show. By the way, I'm Derek Young. I'm joined by Grant Flanders. Didn't tell you that beforehand, but Deuce Bond, star of the show. I guess when it revolves around him, the topic is probably more along the lines of how much is he going to be used? How mm-hmm. many touches does he get? How many snaps does he get? Uh, 20 has kind of been the number floated in terms of touches. And I think that's, you know, somewhere where he's going to be near. I don't know if he's going to go over that. You know, it's something that I think um, if they needed to, they could. Um, if injuries happen in the backfield behind him, that's where I think he would probably go over 20 touches a game. But I think they have a scenario now where they have enough depth in the backfield, um, especially with a guy like Joe Irvin with all the praise he's received in the offseason. Now they have a chance to maybe not rely on Deuce Vaughn as much. He still is you know, the electric player he is, so he's going to get the touches. And I think um, around 18 is like a sweet spot that I would – I would probably think he gets the amount of touches, but it will be interesting to see too because with Joe Irvin and stuff um, inserted back into the lineup, you could have more two-back sets, and you see Deuce Vaughn with the ability to get more touches in the passing game that way. Yeah, he had almost 16 touches per game a year ago, just over 15 if I remember correctly. That also came with the first two games where he's still kind of getting his feet wet. And then another game, I think, West Virginia, where he got a little dinged up, and that probably limited his touches as well. I think he'll probably get closer to 20 than most think. Uh, The snap count, for me, is probably a little bit more important, how much he can be on the field, even if he's not touching the ball, because that that only means good things, because at 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 that point, not only is he someone that's explosive with the ball in his hands, he also can become a decoy if he's out on the field, you know, at least to any extent. But so the more he can be on the field just from a snap count perspective, the better. Um, Obviously, the difference this year, too, and some of this is projecting because these guys aren't necessarily proven yet, but the hope is there's probably a little bit more quality depth behind him. There is a lot of buzz right now about Joe Irvin. Yeah, Joe Irvin is a guy that I think is going to be able to come in and, you know, maybe not be – starting caliber but close to it and by the end of the season I think he could become comfortable enough in the offense to where he could be a starting caliber running back you know behind Deuce Vaughn and that is where the the confidence rises when it comes to talking about the depth in this running back room um Tricetti Wright you know has it's been talked about on and off but not nearly the amount um Joe Irvin has been lauded about in you know a, a time when he you know didn't yeah obviously he opted out last season um so it's kind of impressive to see him come back and it doesn't seem like he really skipped a beat with yeah. his progressions. Yeah, we, we spoke to Joe Irvin on Monday um, after practice, and, and I did ask him that because we saw you know, 99.9% of the, the college football players that opted out didn't return to the school they were at prior to that. So I asked him, you know, was it always your purpose to you know wind up back in Manhattan? And he did confirm that to be the case. Uh, it was always a purpose for me to return. Just... Uh, just been around Coach Kleinman. Uh, he a great head coach. Coach Malone, they very supportive. It's just been great uh, bonding with my teammates. They opened me back with welcome on. Uh, just everything, the coaches, everybody just showing me love, welcome. His first year he was, he did see the field as a true freshman right out of the gate really mm-hmm. too. I remember he had a pretty good game against Bowling Green or at least that might've been a, his coming out party of sorts even if it wasn't you know a big numbers game. That was certainly his introduction to fans inside Bill Snyder Family Stadium. And obviously, that was before Jacardi Wright started to see the field. Because Jacardi Wright's coming out party, so to speak, of sorts, was until later on that season against Mm -hmm. Iowa State. So both of those guys did have splashes their true freshman season. Um, Obviously, there was no Joe Irvin last year. Jacardi Wright maybe a little bit of a setback last year. So they're both looking to revive their careers at Kansas State, so to speak, um, this year in the 2021 season. I guess... How, how much do we plan to see Joe Irvin? How much do we plan to see Jacardi Wright? It's something that we don't have the answers to yet yeah. either in, in how they divvy up those touches between those three um, will be interesting. Uh, probably one last point to touch on is, you know, he had been lauded here and there. Mm-hmm. I don't know about if it was 
it might be because it was asked directly, but DJ Giddens, true yeah. freshman running back from Junction City, late arrival. Um, we covered that. Um, you know, we had that news for the longest time on okay, KSO so before it became um, common common news, I, I guess, if you want to say it like that. Uh, Chris Kleiman touched on a little bit as a guy that was making a dent. Brian mm-hmm. Anderson did, but today, or on Monday, Skylar Thompson really went out of his way to commend the true freshman. That, you know, that's exciting to see. It was one of the, the things that stuck out to me that Kyle, Skylar said he said a lot of good things, but you don't always hear him, um, you always hear him talk, talk about his guys, but not a true freshman like that usually. And I think Skyler means it in that way. I mean, he's a well-built dude as well. If you ever see Giddens on camera um, or in person, you can tell this guy um, could be a really good running back at the next level if he does have his head on straight. Sounds like from Skyler's perspective that this guy's doing everything right um, on the football field and in practice. And seems like, you know, could make a a for sure impact in the future. Um, But then the one thing I would want to say before we do sign off too – we should probably, I mean, maybe you did mention it, and I think we both kind of mentioned it, but how how excited are for you to see more two-back sets in this offense compared to what we saw last year? I think we did see quite a bit of two-back last year between Deuce Vaughn and Harry Trotter. So I, guess, I don't I think guess it's going to be any The addition different. of Irvin, then, what would that be? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just don't think the, the offense will change a whole lot. They've, mm-hmm. done, they've done that. They've done diamond formation with three backs back there. So I don't see the formation stuff changing all that much. It'll just be different guys back there. And maybe maybe a bit more dynamic um, as opposed to having Harry Trotter, but I don't mm-hmm. think the usage of those formations will change a whole lot. Yeah. It'll be more about hopefully getting Deuce Vaughn on the field as much as possible, whether he's getting the ball or as a decoy of sorts. Obviously, very promising group. The running back position with Brian Anderson at the helm. They built a really terrific room. It's very reminiscent of the offensive line, although maybe not as mm-hmm. proven as the offensive line. Offensive line a little bit more proven, a little bit more experience, a little bit more snaps under their belt because it's going to be kind of a new ball game for both Joe Irvin and Jacardi Wright. When you listen to the KSO show next time, we'll be touching on the defense of ends as a, that's a position group that's going to be quite young a year from now, and they have some replacing to do with Wyatt Hubert out the door at this point in um, – they're hoping that they get more production from the guys behind that were behind him, whether it be Khalid Duke or Felix Anadike. That's the, you know, I guess a little spoiler for that episode. For this one, he's Grant Flanders. I'm Derek Young. Tell your friends. Thank you.